In this video, we're going to cover cavitating lung lesions. A cavitating lung lesion is a gas-filled area within either a nodule, mass, or area of consolidation in the lung. And given that there's so many causes of cavitating lung lesions, it can be quite daunting when you're faced with either a single or multiple cavitating lung lesions. We do thankfully have a very useful mnemonic, which is cavity. The C stands for cancer. The A stands for autoimmune. The V stands for vascular. The I stands for infection. The T stands for trauma. And the Y stands for youth. So let's start with C for cancer. The most likely cause is a squamous cell carcinoma in primary malignancies. When talking about secondary malignancies, firstly, you're more, more likely to have more than one uh, lesion, and these are most likely to be from a head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. So let's take a look at this first example. So we can see that on this uh, CT chest, the right lung is grossly abnormal. There is a soft tissue density lesion in the right lower lobe, which also has some gas density within it in keeping with a cavitating lung lesion. And around this abnormal lesion, there are multiple uh, further nodules, particularly in the right lower lobe. There's also some interstitial thickening and there is a pleural effusion here. So this is in keeping with a primary squamous cell carcinoma lung malignancy with multiple metastases and also lymphangitis carcinomatosis. On this case, you would also look for PEs and obviously you would look for uh, nodal disease as well as for bony um, metastases and liver and adrenal metastases. Another important cause of cavitating lung lesions is autoimmune causes. So this is usually granulomatosis with polyangitis or rheumatoid nodules which have cavitated. So if we take a look at this frontal chest x-ray, we can see that there are two abnormal soft tissue lesions. One is in the right lower zone and the other is in the left lower zone. The lesion in the left lower zone has gas density projected over it, which suggests that it is cavitating. So let's take a look at the CT from the same patient and we can see that what we saw on the chest x-ray is seen here as a soft tissue lesion in the right lower lobe and in the left lower lobe we have a cavitating lung lesion and with clinical correlation this was found to be granulomatosis with polyangitis. So now we're on to V for vascular. So these are pulmonary infarcts which can cavitate and also something that relates to both vascular and infectious causes which are septic emboli. So these are images from a patient who presented very very sick and septic and had a history of being an IVDU. And if we look at the CT chest here on the left, we can see that the lungs are grossly abnormal. There are multiple pulmonary nodules, most of which are cavitating. And they're worse in the lower lobes bilaterally. This is a case of septic emboli. Interestingly, when you take a look at the CT abdo pelvis in the same patient, firstly you can see that the left thigh is more swollen than the right thigh. Also, there's been some surgical intervention in the left groin, probably due to a pseudoaneurysm or an abscess. And when you look carefully, you can see that there's actually extensive thrombus in the left external iliac vein. And the small amount of air seen just here suggests that this is infected. This is a chest x-ray from a patient who presented with a few days of shortness of breath um, and chest pain and hemoptysis. And as we can see, there is an abnormal left mid-zone lesion, which has a definite air fluid level. And this is in keeping with a solitary cavitating lesion. So looking at the CT chest in the same patient, we can see that there is extensive thrombus in the left main pulmonary artery and this abnormal lesion is seen in the territory which would be supplied by that artery. So this is in keeping with an infarct. On the long windows, this confirms a cavitating lesion and this, as we said, was a pulmonary infarct in a patient who had a pulmonary embolism. 
Now we're on to I for infection, which covers abscesses, aspergillus, and TB. And also in uh, immunocompromised patients, you should think about fungal diseases, which can also cavitate. On this chest x-ray, we can see that there are abnormal lung lesions. One is in the left upper zone, and the other is in the right mid zone. And they both demonstrate a specific radiological sign, which is the air crescent sign. And here we can see air around this soft tissue lesion here and here. And this is a diagnosis of bilateral aspergillomas. These are fungus balls which grow in pre-existing cavities in the lungs. So patients who have had previous TB or bronchiectasis or any kind of lung disease that causes cavities are at risk of um, aspergillomas growing in one of these cavities. This chest x-ray shows a right mid-zone lesion which is cavitating with this gas density projected here. This was found to be post-primary tuberculosis. We know that um, post-primary tuberculosis is much more likely to cavitate than primary tuberculosis. So now we're on to our last two letters, T for trauma and Y for youth. So in trauma, we're talking about traumatic pneumatoceles. These occur in blunt trauma, and it's due to the shearing forces which cause lacerations within the lungs, and air gets trapped within the lacerations, and they look like cysts on CT, but they're actually traumatic pneumatoceles. With Y, we're talking about congenital lesions and conditions which um, are gas-filled. So these are CPAM, sequestration, and bronchogenic cysts. This next CT is from a patient who presented as a major trauma call. They'd come off their motorbike at 60 miles per hour and with GCS3. So there are multiple abnormalities bilaterally. Firstly, we have a pneumothorax on the left side. We also have all these areas of consolidation, which are particularly worse in the left lung, but also seen in the right lung, and these are contusions. We also have these cystic areas, again worse in the left lung, and these are in keeping with traumatic pneumatoceles. The patient also had multiple fractures, which uh, were seen on the bone windows. In a nutshell, we've covered the main causes of cavitating lung lesions and the pneumonic cavity is quite a useful way of remembering all the different varied causes. However, what's very, very important is to look at the clinical information very carefully because this ultimately is what will help you in deciding what is the cause of the cavitating lung lesion.